Eighth grade, lesson 3.2, rate of change and slope. So a quick reminder of uh, what rate of change is. It is always the ratio of dependent variable to independent variable. And just a quick refresher on what they mean by variable being dependent or independent. One of those can't happen without the other. The dependent variable depends on the independent variable to happen. Here's an example. We've got Ava mowing lawns. She mows lawns, she makes money. She can't make money without mowing lawns, right? So the independent variable that's relied upon is the fact that she goes and mows the lawns. The dependent variable, how much money she makes, depends on how many lawns she mows. So rate of change is going to be in that range of um, dependent to independent, in that order, dependent to independent. So in this case, my dependent variable, again, was uh, money because it depended on how many lawns she mowed. So it's going to be 15 to 1 ratio. You probably recognize that as the unit rate to every one item. Every one lawn she mows, she makes $15. And given any point of information, if it's a proportional relationship, if it's, if it's going to stay constant, then we could take any point of information and reduce it down to know what her unit rate is. For example, we if we looked at this day one here and she had a 15 um, to one ratio, we know she's making $15 for every one lawn that she mows, right? But let's say we didn't know that. We, uh, we found out that she had $45 made for mowing three lawns and she was paid the same amount for each lawn. And so you remember from a couple years ago when you started working at unit rates, you would just divide that to find out or reduce it to find out. Uh, we would go three, divide by three, divide by three, and we would get 15 to one ratio. It's going to all reduce down to the same amount if it's proportional. And we'll find out that her rate of pay is $15 per lawn that she mows. So how can I find a graph to find a unit rate? If I know it's a, it's a proportional relationship, I can tell because it's a straight line. Pretend that's a straight line. Sorry, I didn't have a ruler. Uh, if that's a straight line that goes to origin, I know this is a proportional relationship. So there has to be a unit rate. Uh, Nathan's gone for his bike ride, but instead of telling me how fast what his rate of speed was, um, he just showed me the graph. Like, look at this. Right, so I'm wondering, like, what was what was Nathan's average rate of speed um, for his bike ride, right? So I could take that graph and I can um, take two points off of there, two, uh, a point, let's say here or here, or maybe this point and this point. I'm always looking, when I see a graph, I'm always looking for the point at which they go through one of these intersection pieces right there, because I could see usually, ah, uh, that's right at there and there. So when it goes through the intersection of two um, numbers that are very clear, then I call that a point and I use that point. So um, I'll use this point. This was where he was at. Oh, by the way, uh, these measurements are distance in miles and time in hours, miles per hour, right? So distance over time is what we're looking for. So I'm going to take uh, this point here. And then I'm going to subtract this point from it. I'm writing this point as a ratio, though. This was 30 miles in two hours. So I'm going to take 30 miles in two hours. And I'm going to find the difference between that one and the other point. Uh, let's choose this one, a smaller one, because I'm going to subtract, right? So this one's bigger. This one has a higher value. And then this one. So this one is 15 miles in one hour. Then I'll just uh, do the calculating. 30 minus 15 is 15, and 2 minus 1 is 1, and that's my unit rate. What if I didn't choose those points? What if I chose different points? Um, because we chose this point minus this point. What if I had chosen this point minus this point? Am I going to get a different answer than Sam over there who chose different points? Well, let's find out. So let's say I chose 
this point, which is 45 and 3, 45 and 3, and this point way down here, which was 15 for every one hour, like that, then I would do the subtraction just like I did before. 45 minus 15 is 30. 3 minus 1 is 2. And reduce that fraction, divide by 2 to both you're going to get 15 to one. You're still going to get the same unit rate. Now, obviously, if I wanted unit rate, and you know that that comes down to one unit, you could just find, can I specifically see where one is at and match it with where it's at? Sometimes it's a very clear number. Sometimes it's an in-between, like a decimal or fraction, and you've got to do a little calculation to get it more exact. But if you can find, if they ask you unit rate, and you go to the one and go, okay, there it's 15 unit rate, that's another way. So that now leads us to the slope formula. Slope is usually represented by the variable m. I always call it slope m to help me remember that. So you'll hear me say slope m a lot. Um, slope can be found using the distance formula, which you're gonna wanna try and commit to memory. It looks kind of monsterish but it really is just a little kitty cat. Once I show you how and you get a little practice to it, it's easy to use, okay? So you're gonna wanna start to remember m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is how you would say that. This is the distance formula and I'll show you how we use it. We used it actually, you just saw me use it, but I'm gonna show you again, now referring to it as the slope formula or the slope m formula. So they want us to find a slope of a line. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that line out so you can see it. I'll try to make it as straight as possible. Okay, so here is my somewhat straight graph here. Um, I have a straight line, pretend it's straight, that goes through origin. And I'm gonna choose two points on the line where they intersect. That was supposed to intersect there and that was supposed to intersect there. So I'm going to choose these points and put their coordinate points by the way, I noticed in my notes that I had the one, two, three, four, five, six going the negative direction on my uh, coordinate plane in the notes that I have written for you, uh, but I forgot to put the negative signs. I refer to them as negatives and I mark them down in the calculations as negative, but I didn't write them on there, so I apologize for that. Anyway, I've, hopefully you figured it out. But those, this we're going in a negative direction. This is a negative slope because it's leaning way back. Um, so I will choose my two points. So just like we did in sixth grade when we chose uh, points, this point, we always go on the X first, how far on the X, and then how far on the Y. So to get to this point, we would go negative six on the X, turn and go positive four on the Y. So this is a negative six, four. We'll call this one, coordinate one, okay? Then I'm going to go um, at the another point, the second point I want to look at. The second point I want to look at to get there, I have to start at the origin and go negative 3 on the x, turn, and go positive 2 on the y. Negative 3 on the x, turn, positive 2 on the y. This is my second set of coordinates. All right. When I have chosen two points, if I'm asked for the slope of the line, then all I have to do is dig into my memory banks, pull out the distance formula, because Mrs. Sanchez told me that I need to memorize that. So here it is, I'm gonna write it down because she always made me write the formula to, so I could tell myself I'm brainwashing myself. Every time I write it, it sinks deeper in. Y to M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Now I'm gonna fill in the information. M, the slope M, is what I'm looking for. All right, so what is this y2? What is this x2? What is this y1? Where does that come from? Remember how I said uh, this is, we'll call this coordinate one and we'll call this coordinate two. And because you know how to add and subtract with integers, it doesn't really matter which order you put them in, which one you call what. Coordinate one, coordinate two, that's what these are referring to. So I'm going to take the y, remember this is x and this is y. I'll put that there if that helps you. That's why we always put our coordinates in x, y order, right? Okay, so this is y, 4, and this is y, 2. They want y, 2, y from the second set. I named these the second set, so let's use that. y, 2 is 2. 
minus y1, well, that's y from this guy, 4, x2. That's coordinate 2, and this is x, negative 3, minus x1. Well, that's x from the first coordinate, negative 6. Okay, now that I've done that, I'll just do my calculations. This is 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. And then remember, this double negative is opposite of a negative, which is a positive. I'm just going to go ahead and convert that to that positive. So now that I have a negative 3 plus 6, so I have $6, I owe 3. I'm still going to have 3 left. And that gives me negative 2 thirds. That's your slope. So all you'd have to do is say m equals my slope m equals negative 2 thirds. We like it in fraction form because fractions, because uh, the slope is usually done in rise over run format. What they mean by rise over one run is from one point to the next, how much do you rise? Sometimes it's fall, but we still call it rise, negative rise. How much do you rise and how much do you run? The reason this is a negative slope is because I rise positive 2, but I run negative three. One, two, one, two, three. Rise, two, run, three. But I'm going negative on one of them. So it's a negative two-thirds slope M. Negative slope M's go lean back. We'll get this coming around with practice. It will become easier and easier with practice. Be patient with your brain, but do work on trying to get that into your memory banks. It will be helpful.